Hello, my name is Aaron Catan and I'm here at COP26 this week and it's been an absolutely incredible week where there's been loads of stuff going on in terms of climate change and the role that nuclear has to play in getting to a clean future. I'm really excited to be here because I'm with Director General Rafael Mariano Grossi and we're going to have a quick chat about uh, his perspective on a few questions. So, DG, um, could you tell us something about yourself that many people might not know or that you might have an unusual hobby or um, embarrassing story, anything like that? Well, I don't know about embarrassing things, but good things that perhaps people may not know is that I have uh, eight children, eight, you know, se seven daughters uh, and a son, uh, different ages, but mostly young adults um, to, to the last one, the boy, who is a, who is a teenager now. So, uh, you know, I think I have a pretty good idea of uh, different um, ages and what's happening. So, um, uh, I would like people to know that, you yeah. know. Excellent. Yeah, nice big family. That's, that's yeah. really lovely to hear. Yeah. yeah. And if you were thinking back to when you were in your mid-twenties as a young professional, uh, coming to somewhere like COP, would you expect there to be? Do you, would you expect us to be where we are in terms of climate change now? No, I would say you know from my uh, you know younger days, I, I knew I wanted to be uh, a diplomat. I'm, I'm a career diplomat. I work all my life in in, in nuclear or non-proliferation writ large. Um, so when, when I was you know I, when I had your age or even younger, um, climate change was not even an issue. So I would have could have never imagined that uh, something like this uh, uh, could happen. So um, back then, uh, even if we were creating uh, unknowingly, perhaps, the conditions of the problems we, we, we have now, we were, we were really not aware. It was, it was really not an issue. What was an issue those days was, for example, the, um, uh, the oil crisis in the early 70s. I mean, this is the time where I had your, your age. Um, so there was, it was more seen as a threat to our lifestyles, more, you know, more than the, the planet or the, you know, the, the environment being the issue. The issue was, well, there's no more petrol, what's going to happen, the prices are so high. And that was my first realization of all these big forces at play uh, around the world of energy, if you want. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's an incredibly complex problem, isn't it? And, it and, is. And getting to grips with it is half the challenge. It and is. I can really see at COP that that momentum is growing, and it's it's Youth Day today, and the IAEA is doing this um, Youth Pavilion and shortly after this. But if, if you had some advice to give to yourself if you were attending something like this, what, what would you tell yourself? Well, I, you know, it's, it's difficult to imagine myself uh, here at that age with the problems now. But what I see is that, uh, and I, I like it, is that uh, you have uh, so many uh, possibilities here. You have all the expressions uh, you have when you, when you visit the stands, for example. Uh, you can really uh, have a pretty good idea of what is going on um, uh, in the world. So I would meander, you know, uh, through the uh, corridors uh, and, and perhaps look at what attracts me uh, more. Yeah. And I, I mean, just walking around myself this week, I've been absolutely blown over by just the caliber of people around who yes. really want to make a difference. Yeah. But then also, yeah, just how much, how much they're willing to listen, which is, which is really, really helpful. And, well, and one interesting cool. thing there could be that you have like these two dimensions. You have the event, like here, you know, have these people walking and, the, as I was saying, the stands and the events. And then you have the, the negotiation, the, mm -hmm. the diplomatic negotiation yeah. that is going in parallel. And one wonders to what extent there is a, an interconnection. And I hope there is one. Yeah, yeah. And that's something I think as the young generation, we're trying to build that bridge from the, yes. from the diplomatic side to the, the How reality. do you influence, eh? Exactly. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So have you had any kind of failures over your career that have, have shaped your direction or your character and, and what have you taken from them? Not many, but the ones I, uh, that I had were quite, uh, you know, uh, important and, uh, and made me um, think about what was I going to do next. Yeah. And one was not so long ago, 
because actually, I, and it had to do with what I'm doing now, mm -hmm. because um, I, I was supposed to uh, be a candidate at, 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 at one moment, and that didn't happen, and it was postponed. So at that time, I was terribly frustrated. I had this vision for the agency, for the IEA. I was so enthusiastic about it, and then all of a sudden, for a number of reasons, political reasons, whatsoever, um, yeah. I had to wait without really knowing whether I would still have a chance yeah. to, to, to do this. And in that time, I had to decide whether I would be, you know, insisting, doing something else. And I decided to pursue my dream and, that, and, and to try to fill the time that would be um, necessary to get to, to the next election yeah. with yeah. important things that would uh, strengthen me, uh, strengthen my vision, uh, prepare me better for what I'm doing now. And I never regretted that. I, I was doubting whether, you know, insisting on something would be the right thing to do or whether, you know, I should reorient, you know, my life and be ambassador elsewhere, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and do something different. And I said, no, I will wait yeah. for my chance to come. I, 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 I'm convinced mm -hmm. about this. Um, and it, it happened. So yeah. it's one thing that I, I think more or less fits the, yeah, that, the idea. 100%. I think there's a really nice lesson around there in, in terms of yeah. having patience and, and yeah. like, yeah, just following through on, on that side of things. Excellent. And, and do you feel hopeful for COP26 and, and what have been your reflections so far? Well, I, I think that uh, uh, the conference is perhaps not going to be delivering what could be the best possible outcome, but at the same time, talking to the other leaders, and I've been seeing many of them, really, uh, I see a seriousness, and I see that they all recognize the gravity of what is happening. Of course, from that to seeing them walking the same kind of path, well, it may be, it may be different, because at the same time, we need to recognize that, unfortunately, we see lots of tension in the world now, and these tensions uh, come here and you, you, you can feel it uh, among, among certain countries, and that, that could perhaps affect, I hope not, could affect the best possible uh, outcome. In any case, these are processes where, a little bit, harking back to what I said now about my own life, one should persist. When you are convinced about the necessity or, or, or the goodness of, or, of something, I think you should never throw the towel. No. And it's honestly so inspiring to see you at COP26 for me personally and, and seeing the effort we are really putting in to, oh, to have you. those diplomatic kind of relations and, and get the word out and, and we almost consider ourselves as you are, you are a leader and we're the t troops on the ground trying to, to, to get the conversations well, going. Well, in different times of our lives, I think we, we all need, I, wouldn't, I don't know if it's a leadership thing, but... Uh, the voices need to converge. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they are dispersed. Otherwise, uh, we may be right about something. But if we do not find the most efficient way to, to, to put the message across and hopefully uh, influence and shape events, it will never happen. It will simply never happen. You know, talking to uh, or about uh, the, the cops, when, when I started as DG, Many were saying, well, no, the cops are not for nuclear. There are people who are very critical. They don't like you. They may criticize you. And it does happen. It has yeah. happened. Yeah. But I, I, I believe that um, mostly and, and quite, I think, you know, the vast majority of people appreciate that, that, that we come here, that we explain. Not all may agree, yeah. but uh, they see the disposition to talk and to explain because at the end of the day, I think there is a, a good story to be told about nuclear, and there has been a lot of prejudice about it, and one has to also have the humility to listen um, and to see when there is a legitimate concern, or, you know, in some cases, there may be a political agenda or whatever, but one has to deal with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. There's no other way. And uh, Yeah, I think something you said there around kind of collaboration is something that we embrace wholeheartedly. And want to try and work with, with as many other groups as possible because together we will be so much stronger with that one message that one voice and and one of one of the messages that we've had is um, 
to have a clean and sustainable and abundant low carbon future as part of our net zero needs nuclear campaign. And do you support what, what we're doing as part of the well, generation? I think your, your campaign is so refreshing in this regard because these things are not for uh, just decision makers or for people in high places. We have to build, you know, like a grassroots movements that are going to be pushing this in, in real life. Because at the end of the day, it may sound a bit cliche, but it's true, it's your problem more than mine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 2050, 2060, most probably I won't be around. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's going to be you, your children, if you choose to have them, or your friends, mm -hmm. and, and if you have a planet that has become unmanageable, unsustainable, or dependent on a number of factors to lead a normal life, yeah. well, then it would be a tremendous tragedy. Why? Because you saw yeah. that it could have been different. Yeah. Yeah. You saw a time where we were still able to prevent the worst, yeah. and it didn't happen. What a tragedy yeah. would that be? So this, I think, is what um, inspires me in any case, and I suppose all more reason for you, for your generation, to call us, yeah. to come together and to work together with the older generations because at the end of the day, I mean, it's, it's, it's for all of us. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a very simple truth. And there's so much experience that you all have that we would love to kind of tap into. And, and, and well, this really... is something that we need to do. I, I was, you know, I was blessed in having a couple of uh, leaders in my life that were generous and were passing what they knew uh, to me. Um, and I feel this like a moral uh, responsibility. Yeah. And this is why I was mentioning my, my children, because it's something that has to be, not that you need to be a father or a mother, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, it's something that you feel you have to give to somebody because you, you, went, through, you went through this. And in this case, I think uh, the global warming is something that is man-made, we did it, uh, it was not bound to happen, so it is up to us to, to change it. Yeah. So let's absolutely. see how to go about that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And nuclear, of course, is, is so important. A key part of that, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So I'll, I'll end on one quote that, that really strikes with me, and I'd like to hear what your comments are on it. So mm -hmm. if we, yeah, if, if we want to go fast, we go alone. But if we want to go further, we go together. Is that a Chinese one? Or? I'm not sure where it's from, but it's... <laughs> do you, what do you think about that? I think it's, um, it's, it's a very uh, interesting one. The problem with it is that we don't have a, we don't have a choice to go alone. Uh, we are in this together. Whether it's fast or slow, we are in this together. And yeah. we got to go fast in the right direction. Yeah, that's really good. I really love that. Thank like you so much. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. And well, let's continue enjoying this. Yeah, absolutely. So um, see you around. Yeah, thanks so much, DG. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks for tuning in.